Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Book 8 of his Institutes, John Cassian is considering the spirit of anger. And anger is among the eight capital vices that will then later become the seven deadly sins. And he wants to head off a likely, we could call it sort of excuse or practice that a number of people will engage in, including the monks that he's writing to. And they will use scripture as a justification for this because there is this injunction uh, from Paul, let not the sun go down on your anger. And so it sounds, at least to certain people, like, well, okay, so I have to stop being angry when it's bedtime or nighttime, but during the day, I'm not letting the sun go down on my anger if I retain my anger over the course of the day. So that's okay, right? You know, I just have to be able to turn it off when the, the light goes out or the sun goes down or something like that. And Cassian is saying, no, that's not really establishing a, as we can call it, lawful limit or boundary. The Latin term there is licet, which means, you know, like observing certain norms. He's saying, no, that's a, that's a bad idea. Why? Because what you're doing is you are indulging your anger and rage for a certain time, and that's going to be problematic for you, right? It'll give full play, as he says, to passion and dangerous excitement. And it's interesting here. Uh, I've remarked at different places that Cassian tends to use two different terms. Uh, furor, rage, is how we translate it, and then ira, anger, right? And he talks about the satisfaction of our wrath, satietatum furoris, right? So if we indulge that, we're gonna, we're gonna have some problems. And then the uh, vengeance of anger, otricis irai, right? These, these are the two things that go hand in hand with each other. So we don't want to just use that notion of, well, you know, maybe eight hours is okay, but nine hours isn't. And why? Well, because it's going to lead us into all sorts of problems. And then he goes on uh, and he says, even worse, and very interestingly here, he says, I cannot say it without shame on my own part. So Cassian is himself fessing up that he has, he's done this. Um, worse is when one's implacability, and that's just a, a translation of the Latin term, implacabilitas, right? An inability or unwillingness to be placated, to be satisfied, to let one's anger and one's offense go. So one's implacability, as he says, extends anger over uh, a set of days, not allowing or allowing the sun to go down on your anger and then rise and continuing it on. So he says, um, nourishing rancorous feelings against those against whom they've been excited. And the rancorous feelings is actually just rancor, rancor, this kind of bitterness, amaritudinum rancoris, right? So nourishing that within one's own self. Um, and then he, he says something very interesting here. He says that they deny negunt, right? They, they say, I, I'm not angry. Don't worry about me. They deny in words, in verbis, that they're angry. But they show, or actually, this is a very strong term, comprobantur. They prove of themselves systematically, you could say, that they are actually angry. And how do they do this? So he says in two different modalities. In fact, 
re ipsa, right, in the matters themselves and in their deeds, in their actions, opere, in the deed, literally. So these are people that are engaging in what we would nowadays probably call passive aggressivity, right? They're, they're still angry, so they do things. Oops, I didn't mean to knock over your plant that you got in your uh, cubicle. I was just you know, passing by and I was careless. I'm not angry at you. I didn't do it because I was angry. I deny that, but really that's what I was doing. You know, These are the people who have a sour, bitter attitude towards others, even though they deny it. And so what Cassian says that they're doing, which is quite dangerous, is that they, um, you know, they don't speak to these people pleasantly or address them with ordinary civility. And they think that they're not doing wrong in this. Why? Because they're not seeking to avenge themselves for their upset. But, he says, since they don't dare or are not able to show their anger openly, they drive it in. To their own detriment. They drive the poison of anger, as he's going to call it, into their very own hearts, and they secretly cherish it and feed on it in themselves without shaking off by an effort of mind their sulky disposition. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then he says, but digesting it as the days go by, somewhat mitigating it uh, over a while, right? So there are people who you know, they, they're not allowed to or they feel that they can't express their anger openly, so they nourish it within their hearts, and that's, that's not good for them. And that leads to what's being translated here as sulkiness. The more literal translation of this would be sadness or dejection, tristitiae, right? And this is actually among the eight capital vices. And Anger does, in fact, lead to this uh, kind of sadness, or sorrow is another way of translating it, that is not good for a person when it can't be expressed. I mean, this is sort of a very early insight about some people's depression being anger directed inward or retained within themselves. A despair could be also connected with that as well. So, you know, not letting the sun go down in your anger. Um, you, you really shouldn't hold on to it that long. You definitely don't want to hold on to it for days and days and leave it in your heart and show it in these passive aggressive ways. And then uh, he also says, it looks as if this was not the end of vengeance to everybody. Some can only completely satisfy their wrath or sulkiness if they carry out the impulse of anger as far as they are able some sort of revenge you know it doesn't necessarily have to be in kind oh you destroyed my car i'm going to destroy your car it could be you know i'm going to report this person anonymously Ooh, i'm going to get them i'm going to talk about them behind their back it, it could be whatever means you want but it's being driven by as he says both wrath and sulkiness and so he tells us that this is even more problematic. Uh, we're not restraining the feelings, the emotions, the motus within us, the, the drive, uh, from a desire to calm them, which would be a good motive, right? Uh, instead, what we're trying to do is deal with our own inability, or as it is translated here, lack of opportunity in opium. And, you know, Opus is deed, right? So in opia means like being in a condition, being unable to carry out what it is that you want to do. So an inability to carry out a sort of revenge, right? So what do these people do? He brings up this thing again. He, they can do nothing more sometimes than speak without ordinary civility. They're harsh. They're thoughtless. Not really thoughtless, but just pretending to be. They're mean. They're, hard, they're, they're quick with the person. They don't want to hear what they have to say. And all of this would be along those lines of passive aggressivity. And he says, this looks as if anger was to be moderated only in action, not to be altogether rooted out from its hiding places in our heart. And so that's a problem, right? Why? Because wrath that is nursed in the heart 
is causing darkening or darkness in our minds. That one way of interpreting the sun going down is that anger itself makes the sun of our intellects or minds go down in its, its feeling, right? So this is uh, affecting the person as well. And he tells us that we're unable not only to admit the light of wholesome counsel and knowledge, but also uh, be a temple of the Holy Spirit. We can't uh, uh, have any divine aid, but it also prevents us from having wholesome counsel and knowledge, right? So that, that's a central problem. And again, a good reason why not to retain anger within our hearts. Uh, the last thing that he really says along these lines has to do with another interesting scriptural verse. This is from the Gospel of Matthew, from the famous Sermon on the Mount, where uh, Jesus actually tells people, if your brother has something against you, then leave your gift, the sacrifice that you're bringing, at the altar, go be reconciled to your brother, then come back and make your gift. So you're supposed to suspend whatever religious activities that you're involved in until you've straightened out this other thing that is presumably a little bit more important, not having anger, rancor, furor in your heart against your fellow human being. And so he says, um, how then may we retain displeasure against our brother? I will not say for several days, but even the, the going down of the sun, if we're not allowed to offer prayers to God when he has anything against us, if we're supposed to pray without ceasing, which a lot of Christians think you're supposed to do, and uh, certainly Cassian thinks you're supposed to do, and in every place lifting up hands without wrath and disputing, then we're in a dilemma. Like he says, well, either we never pray at all, which is a bad idea, right? Because we retain this poison in our hearts and become guilty, or if, uh, else, if deceiving ourselves, we venture to pour forth our prayers. We know we're offering to God no prayer, but obstinate temper with a rebellious spirit. So long as we hold on to our anger, so long as we retain it, even if we think we're justified, we are interfering with our very relationship with the divine. And the divine has revealed this to human beings. So Cassian is saying another good reason not to retain anger within yourself. It's always going to be problematic, except for, of course, when we turn our anger against our own vices, which he discusses elsewhere. So these are some pretty strong reasons for not holding on to, not you know, keeping in mind the anger that we inevitably are going to feel against other people. The idea here is that we should, as soon as we can, get rid of or let go of that anger so it doesn't interfere with our understanding, doesn't get in the way of our relationships, and doesn't cause us further damage, harm, and uh, trouble.